So without further ado, I wanted to launch into the first poll. We want to know how you're adapting to the digital economy. We've all been thrown into this place uh, that we call digital. We're here today in a digital capacity. And we want to know how often are you working with data or on a digital platform? So you should see some options in front of you. Uh, are you interacting daily, once a week, once a month, or maybe never? Um, if you can select that option there, and then we will see who we have in the audience. Thank you. So hopefully this isn't a surprise. Uh, most people over 86% there are interacting daily with data or on some kind of digital platform. And I would say this is not uncommon. Uh, we hear it a lot. But the gap really is trying to understand uh, which knowledge and skills you need to be successful so you can really thrive uh, in this digital economy. And so what we've done with our digital innovation and leadership initiative, we like to say we're turning up the dial on digital transformation. We're really helping people and companies try to understand how to stay competitive and upgrade their skills so they really know how to be successful. So what is this dial initiative? It is providing an innovative and responsive solution for Canadians. So it's a national initiative. It is supporting at both the individual level, helping people get the right knowledge and skills to stay competitive um, in their own uh, skill set and advance their careers. And because these individuals are working in organizations, we know it's the people that have ideas that drive business forward. And so they're helping organizations adapt and stay competitive in this digital economy. And in doing so, we're actually accelerating economic growth for Canada and creating new jobs. We've been working together with a consortium of employers. There's over 40 plus now, private sector, not-for-profit. Um, and we also work with a bunch of partners in connector organizations, such as economic development organizations or different community groups, as well as equity groups. And we really are trying to create a systems change solution. We've promised we would engage with over a thousand people in a three-year initiative. And we're about halfway through our initiative right now. And participants are coming from across Canada because it is an online initiative. So we can have that reach. We have a project value of over $18 million, and that includes a $4 million investment by the Digital Technology Supercluster. And this is actually the largest strategic investment that they've made in a capacity building project, which is great because it's an investment in people. This gives you a snapshot of some of the organizations we're working with in this initiative. So you'll see that large consortium of partners, you'll see different industries and sectors represented, uh, different ways that we're interacting with community groups or equity groups. And this just shows you we're all participating in this digital economy and trying to figure it out together. So how does it work? Uh, we um, have engaged with this consortium and we're really trying to figure out how is that system actually interacting. And so I'll start on the right hand side of this slide. Uh, these were some of our foundational partners as we started this consortium. And what we were finding was that in organizations, people didn't really have the right knowledge or skills to be successful. And so we co-created some digital upskilling programs with our industry partners. And then what we were finding is that our partners in industry needed more people. And so we had to figure out where were we going to get new people to come into these organizations. And so we've been working with three different pathways. One is coming out of post-secondary. So people that have uh, often graduated with an undergrad degree, they might want some more digital programming before they enter into an organization. And so we've partnered with an um, organization called Magnet, which actually allows us to reach across the country. 
We also work closely with our equity, diversity, and inclusion partners, and they've been building uh, preparatory programs that are very focused in particular communities to help learners uh, go along this pathway into an employment opportunity. And so an example, we work very closely with the First Nations Technology Council. They've created an amazing new program uh, that is helping uh, prepare people again for this digital economy. Then they enter into our skilling programs and future employment opportunities. We also help people with industry transitions. Uh, COVID presented many shifts in our economy and the, there are amazing people working in industries that now need a different line of work. So taking those transferable skill sets again into digital skilling program and opportunities at organizations. So this is the ecosystem that is beginning to be built, but we like to say we co-create. So we need people like you uh, that are in the audience here today to continue this learning and momentum that we have to keep Canada competitive. So there's two main programs in that middle, that digital upskilling that we've co-created with our partners. Uh, one of them is around the leadership, digital transformation leadership. And this is really for people that are managing teams. And so maybe Vince, if we could launch into that poll and we could see in our audience, how many people are actually managing teams? Perfect. So if you answered yes to this question, you're managing a team, the program that we're going to talk about today, the Digital Transformation Leadership Program, is really suited for you. Um, it helps people understand the knowledge and skills that they need around digital transformation and how to create an action plan around that. If you answered no, you might be in a position that maybe you're informally managing a team. So sometimes project managers will blur that line as an example or a product manager. Um, and you might consider our digital transformation management program. This is really for people that are implementing digital in their day-to-day -day work, often developers, uh, project managers. Uh, we have different analysts um, that participate in that. And we just hosted a webinar. So um, you can check out our website and see it. It, is, it was recorded and posted there. And now I see Andrew Gemino is with us. I'd like to warmly welcome Andrew to talk a little bit more about the Digital Transformation Leadership Program with you. So over to you, Andrew. Thank you, Jennifer. Really appreciate it. And thanks for the opportunity to talk about this awesome program. So uh, this is the Digital Transformation Leadership Program. And if you can take a look at the type of leaders that and high potential individuals we're looking for in this program that we serve, uh, you can take a look at that list. It's quite a long list. So whether you're there now or you want to be there in the future, I think this is probably a program that is relevant for many people who are in industries or, or organizations that are going through this transformation step. And it's a lot of people. Um, so it's a 11 week program. We'll talk a little bit more about the specifics as we go. It's a virtual program, which means it, it runs at your time. There is a rhythm of our program, which we'll talk about in a sec, but it's something that's accessible to everyone here. And it's about leading digital change within inside your organization. So we'll talk about what that looks like uh, by looking a little bit more specifically at the program. So if you uh, first start with the people who are involved, so we have our best here at Simon Fraser University. So uh, also all great instructors who have particular strengths in particular areas. We also bring in, for example, Joe, Joe Papard uh, from the University College Dublin and other people who uh, also increase our expertise and pool of people who are talking about the various aspects of digital transformation. Um, so first of all, uh, some great instructors, very enthusiastic about pushing the understanding and the development of digital transformation. So starts with instructors. So the next thing you do is you think about what are the objectives? And so we, when we talk about objectives, we think about you, the people in the audience saying, well, what do you need? So one is there's pathways through digital transformation. Sometimes you're thinking about uh, a customer. Uh, sometimes you're thinking about more efficient operations. Either one uh, is a pathway that you need to understand if you're going to be moving forward. It also lets you think about your current state of digital capabilities inside an organization. And then once you understand those two things, develop a vision for the future. And this is where the uh, program really starts to move forward on ideas that you're interested in, things that are relevant to you. And you actually create your own pitch deck at the end of the program 
so that you are ready to talk to people in governance and people in in uh, higher levels of management to say this is the idea this is what we want to accomplish here's the steps now let's get going so that's the idea behind the uh, program is to come out with an active series of objectives that you're going to be able to step into so uh, to do that, what we want to make sure is you got the right foundation. So we uh, searched uh, around to find what we thought was the best foundation for people to start with. And we found this uh, Leading Digital back in 2014 written, but it's been updated since that time. It uh, really has five elements that are important for you. One is understanding your business model and all the digital components of what we mean by digital uh, by a business model now. Then we talk about the customer experience which has become so critical in digital. You've got to make sure that you're touching that, that customer and making sure that you're providing the needs that they're looking for. Then you've got your operations, very efficient. And what has emerged in digital has come to the notion of also employee experience. We've got to recognize the people serving uh, customers as well and making sure that they're having a fantastic uh, experience as well. And that all happens on the top of this digital platform which is about data and the way we work in platforms to uh, share uh, technology and data. So that's our elements that we utilize. And this these elements become the first part of our program. So the first five modules are basically walking through these different parts that you just saw on the previous page, talking about digital platforms, data and AI, the business models, and then really thinking about future readying your workforce through the elements of both customer experience and operational excellence. So this gives you a refresher on those key components that are gonna be inside the digital transformation uh, you know, program. So once we have those, then we spend the first part of part two thinking about our own ideas. So we don't work on ideas that we have, we work on ideas that you have. So through this process where we, we use a lot of discussion, a lot of feedback, we come up and help support your idea. And that would, what you do over the weeks uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, is you start developing those ideas and getting them richer and more uh, kind of fully uh, looked at in regards to the components that are inside that idea. Can your organization actually do the things? Do you have the governance set up? Uh, do you have uh, the ability to make those changes? So we walk you through that journey, which includes not only understanding the customer's digital journey, but also the organization's as well. And then we finally wind up in week 11 with the end of a story that you should be able to tell, a story with impact, a story that's visual, a story that's going to get you noticed and your project hopefully uh, moves forward or step forward. So that's the idea of part two. So we think about the idea for change. Uh, we help you create that idea that's going to be relevant for you. And then we provide you with that uh, opportunity to tell that story in a very impactful and uh, specific way. So those are the those are the things we do in part two. So all told, that gives you kind of this pathway where if you're moving into the digital transformation leadership program, we're going to start up at the very top there with part one. What are the digital capabilities you should be thinking about and making sure you've got a good foundation of that? Then we reflect on the ideas that you've come up with while looking at those various things to say, you know what, my organization, I think, could do this. And then once we've got that basic idea, we then form that idea with more leadership capabilities, understanding the value that you're creating, understanding how the governance is going to affect that, understanding how the organization has to make those changes and can make those changes. And then we use the concept of visual storytelling to help you create a pitch. And then you're actually going to create that pitch and provide that pitch inside uh, the program at the end of the program. So we really get you to a point where you're feeling comfortable about talking about your idea the value behind it and the reasons why your organization should make these steps and the various steps that you're going to take to be successful. So that's the program as a whole. And then the goal of the program, we want you to be able to pitch and provide that digital transformation vision that people are looking for uh, from a person who's leading teams. Uh, we bring that all together, all the work that you do throughout the whole program is brought together into that final module. And then we show you how to tell that story uh, effectively. And we not only talk to you as instructors, but you'll find that it's the, all the participants who are going through at the same time, who have a lot of similar challenges, they're going to also talk to you about what makes sense and what doesn't make sense and how to craft that vision so it really has impact. So together, as a cohort of people who are working through the program and as instructors, you're going to get some really good feedback about what's good in your idea and how to push it forward effectively. So that's the goal. 
So the structure, as we talked about, it's an 11-week virtual program. So you're, you're on, we talk about both what we call synchronous sections. So that's when we're together and all the participants are together talking about uh, a synchronous session. And then we have asynchronous material that you look at so you, you can prepare for that asynchronous session. And then we have these 10 90-minute peer working group sessions that we allow uh, people to work every week. We allow a little bit of time uh, to work with uh, your, the group, the entire group, to make sure that they're comfortable. And all together, what we're trying to find is about four to six hours per week uh, for you to look at the material, to do some of the uh, assignments, and to interact with us in those synchronous sessions. So all together, somewhere between four and six hours per week uh, at the time that you that you are comfortable with. And then there's this rhythm that we like to talk about in our program. So the weekly rhythm is you review the, on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, you're reviewing what we call the asynchronous content. That's content where we have videos and the professors are talking to you about the various aspects that they're looking at that particular week. And then on Wednesday, we hold our peer learning, uh, peer learning sessions. And that's where you come together with the whole cohort and you talk about and you have activities that allow you to develop your ideas. And then on Thursday and Friday, we like you to post those ideas into the discussion board. And then on the weekend, find some time to comment in other posts. And why do you comment? Because that's where you get the uh, feedback from your cohort participants about what they think is important, how it's gonna move forward. So those are the important uh, ideas behind our program. It's a weekly rhythm, you got 11 weeks, and at the end, you get this uh, great presentation that you'll be able to su uh, support your ideas going forward. So what we want to tell you about this program, it's not just a bunch of content, okay? It's not just a bunch of knowledge that we're providing. It's a workshop. It's a set of activities. And it's about you and your thought process, your mindset around digital transformation. And our job is to create that mindset that's going to excite you and provide you with the strength and, and understand the value so you can make a great impact in your organization. So that's the program uh, as a whole. So now the thing, important thing for us is as part of that program, it's about the instructors, it's about the knowledge that we bring you know, from PhDs and doctors from all over the world, but you're gonna find the most exciting and impactful thing will be talking to other people in other industries who are going through a digital transformation as well. And that creates this awesome discussion group uh, and wonderful people who are in it. And that's where I'm going to transfer over to Jennifer because you're going to meet a few of those people who have been through the program now. Thank you, Andrew, and great overview of the program. Really appreciate that. I wanted to introduce our amazing alumni uh, that have completed the Digital Transformation Leadership Program. And really, it's amazing just to hear from them what the program meant, how it felt, and also how they're applying it to their work now. And so without further ado, I will invite them on camera here to introduce you to Armanjeet. He's an IT senior project manager with the city of Surrey. Uh, Christo, who is a senior manager of national operations at PwC. And Olya, a project manager at ISRI Canada. So welcome. Thank you for joining us. And maybe we'll just start out with a question about why you decided to join the Digital Transformation Leadership Program. And oh, yeah, I see you unmuted. Would you like to start us off? Oh, absolutely. Well, good morning, everyone. So good to be here. Good to see Andrew, Jennifer and my uh, cohort. <laughs> so uh, my journey started with Executive MBA program at SFU. I started in 2019 and went online and I successfully finished it in 2021. And Digital Transformation Leadership Program was a wonderful add-on to build on the skills and knowledge that I've already gotten from Executive MBA. But what I absolutely loved about Digital Transformation Program is it felt like mini MBA combined. Because for me, it was about a year gap and seeing my professors again, being part of a cohort again, learning together, and really applying it to my company at the time was fantastic. Thank you, Olya. That was great. Armanjeet, what about you? Why did you join uh, the Digital Transformation Leadership Program? So I'm in the same uh, boat as uh, Olya is. I completed my MOT MBA in July 2022, and uh, just after two or three months, I joined this program. 
And uh, again, I agree with the Oli, it is kind of refresher for the whole MBA program. All the important concepts we learned in MBA that was revised in the that course. And also, I think uh, my main uh, motive to join this program was to understand what are the latest trends happening in the industry about mm-hmm. digital transformation. And above all, I think uh, I want to network with different people uh, from different different industry and uh, to see how other industries are taking digital tra- transformation for them. Very good point. Yeah, it's nice to have that cohort back together and also all the different industries and sectors that are represented um, within it and learning as we go. Yeah. Christo, what about you? Why did you decide to join the program? Good morning, everyone. First of all, sorry that I don't have a similar background as my other colleagues. <laughs> I, I wasn't able to, because I'm working from my, my work laptop and I wasn't able to download it. So, But you've got my beautiful children <laughs> in the background. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the reason why, why I enrolled in this uh, course was specifically um, when I started working at, at PwC uh, in January uh, 2022, um, I actually um, was tasked to set up the, our project support office within our assurance uh, practice. And um, no one really, they, um, let me put it this way, our leadership knew that they, they, they wanted to have project managers to help the engagement teams and not the auditors actually spending time doing that. So my, my um, reason was maybe a little bit different. I didn't think that, um, you know, being... I, I wanted to, uh, let me put it this way, I wanted to actually uh, create something with the learnings of my MBA, so similar to Amajid and Olya, I also did my full-time MBA actually, moved from South Africa, so I wanted to um, to use a lot of those frameworks, and I thought that this course would be a good refresher for me, and obviously also meeting new people, and uh, because I was right at the start at uh, setting up this um, this new project support office, it actually came in very, very handy. So, you know, as we went through the different modules, um, I could actually apply it immediately in my line of work and, and what I was busy doing. And I think it created such a good uh, structure for me to uh, to set up my team. Um, of, uh, I had to set up a team of 30 people uh, with, you know, within my team. And this was super, super helpful. So I can highly recommend it. And that's, that's why I did it. Amazing. And I'm guessing that, um, Olya, you also had some takeaways from the program. I'm wondering maybe if you could speak to that. Um, what were your major takeaways? Absolutely. Well, my transition to a tech industry became mm-hmm. a huge takeaway for me and a successful transition as my previous industry was hotel management. Okay. And I spent about 15 years and I did have master's in business in that particular sector. But with COVID, I came to realization that I might need to jump to another industry. And really, digital transformation program helped me to leverage those skills and have confidence that I am able to lead projects, not only in operations and, say, hotel world, but I can do the same with tech and different products. And when I asked Esri Canada why I became a successful candidate, they said, you adapt, you learn, and your experience shows that. So couldn't be happier. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Armin, do you, what were some of your takeaways from the program? So um, when I uh, think about takeaways, uh, definitely this program gave me a comprehensive view of all the tools and technologies which I can leverage to drive digital transformation uh, uh, in my organization. So uh, definitely it was uh, very useful to have those concepts, those tools learned into this program. And uh, definitely uh, I, it, is, it, it is in my toolkit, which I can use anytime in the future. Very true. Very true. And while we have the audience here, I see some people are interacting um, in the chat or the Q&A there. Feel free to put in your questions. I will read them out and we will try and answer them live too. Uh, We did have a question come in from Mitch um, around being curious to hear about the professional relationships uh, that exist between DevOps, MLOPs, and IT. And I know, Andrew, uh, you have some experience here. I'm wondering if you wanted to jump in on this. Um, It's it's right on topic, Mitch. It's great. It's great. And as you say, 
contributes a little bit to your technical debt in regards to kind of uh, these emerging technical roles. What we uh, found, Blaze and I have actually been working with some of the people in the program to talk about their particular needs, and they've seen that what's emerging for them are three things that are outside most of the traditional program management that's done. One is technical architecture has become so important and getting onto the right platform. So that's one. Second one is the emergence of product, product management. Because you've got applications now that are providing you with these uh, services that, that you're offering to customers, you now have a product management aspect to the work that you have to do in digital transformation. That's not always been the case, and that's something new. But the last one is the most important for me is that people are mentioning this human capital transformation that's happening. People are changing inside organizations. Uh, you know, IT groups are moving into business units. Business units are adapting IT people. There's new roles emerging, and, and you've discussed some of them here about putting together DevOps and other people who are are making differences inside the organization. So I think that's gonna, that's very fascinating, exciting, but uh, I don't think it's come anywhere near the end of it. We're just at the beginning of trying to understand how organizations have to bring this technology and business people together to create value. So that's what I'd say. Great question, though, Mitch. Uh, very interesting. Thanks, Andrew. And thanks for asking or answering the other question that was asked too around um, a digital transformation leadership body of knowledge. And so as Andrew put there in the chat, uh, not yet, uh, maybe coming one day, uh, but we are seeing some changes there as well. Yeah, I think, I don't know if other, uh, Christopher, I don't know if you want to talk about that. I'm seeing an emergence of program managers because digital transformation is never one project anymore. It's always a collection of things. I'm not sure if you're seeing that or if you're, or, 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 or energy, if you're seeing that as well. I can maybe jump in there. I, I definitely think just looking at, you know, working at such a large organization like PwC, there's so many different facets and, um, uh, you know, thing, uh, uh, divisions or business units. Um, and what I found is I was actually quite shocked to see that, you know, it's um, things are moving forward and, you know, being consultancy firm as well, you know, we kind of need to be at the forefront of digital transformation. Um, you know, so um, it's boarding or the idea is really from leadership, you know, top down and, and bottoms up, really, um, you know, people are very, uh, they're embracing it. But what I found is that the, the different lines of service are not really talking to each other. And I think that is where this program also becomes very useful because it doesn't just talk about the new technology. It talks about how can you work more efficiently and how can you shave off time and how can you, you know, give time back to people and make them be more efficient? Because in large organizations, you kind of inherit all these, um, you know, I would say spreadsheets and different things over the years. And, you know, no one asks questions. They just keep on doing it. And what ends up happening is, I'm not sure if uh, any people on the call may be experiencing the same, but you have like trackers on trackers on trackers. And I was shocked to see, you know, for one of our engagements, I think they had like 35 trackers or something. And they kind of all do the same thing, but you know, why do you need to like double data input, you know, all these um, different trackers? So yes, absolutely. And I think this pr um, program really just helped me to kind of consolidate it and, um, you know, make sure that you, you don't just work in a silo, but you work in a large organization. So, so you know, if you bring about a change, it can have a ripple effect on, on other um, lines of service. So it's being mindful of that. And I think at the end of the day, and I said this when, when we, as a group we met, um, you know, there's change management. So it's a, there's lots of change management that actually is incorporated in digital transformation. Uh, I would uh, like to add that as well. I remember, still remember as one of the readings from the course where uh, one of the biggest banks say they are not any uh, anymore a financial institution. They they call them as as a I, uh, like a digital digital company. Digital, digital institution because uh, I think uh, by, by uh, collaborating IT managers and business, IT professionals and business managers, the organization can achieve the benefits of uh, what, uh, whatever the business changes are required and what IT capabilities uh, can be improved. So I think uh, these all come together to achieve a proper business, uh, digital transformation. Yeah, yeah, and what I could add from my previous industry, from hotel management, new jobs that I've seen are product managers. And the reason is we are very customer focused and we've always been and we have to. And with digital world, just like running 10 different programs, being a hotel manager, like our customer needs to have 
one program that works for them. So putting it all together and this this program, because I, I still was doing it during my hotel time. And as Andrew described, we looked into a big picture and how whole organization works. And then we had to pick one particular business unit and one particular problem we wanted to solve and how that organizational change can affect everyone. So I really enjoyed the program and it as much as like I had years of experience, I had MBA, but practical tools and having this program as a workshop with deliverables every week and getting feedback instantly from cohort and from professors, it really, really helped me just to develop thinking tools that again, I can take with me to next industry. That is, it's awesome to hear, Olya. Thank you so much. I think you described that really well. Uh, you know, it's hard sometimes to focus on the the value statement. So you, uh, you know, finding the value is really important, and, and it takes some time to think about it. I also uh, your comment on product is right on topic because what I've seen also is this idea of a productization of uh, processes and services. So they now what you offer now is really a product to a customer, even though it looks like a service. And so digital actually drives us into this place where we have to think about our processes and products as almost the same thing. And how do we think about that? Now product managers are coming to the fore because they understand the customer relationship and experience you need to do good products. And now our processes are going to have the same uh, impact. Like if you don't serve the customer well in the processes that you have digitally for them, then you're not going to get those customers staying with you. So it's it's really changing the way we think about the traditional processes, products, and all those things as well. So it's a big impact. We don't realize all the impacts about digital. I love what you mentioned too about using something you were doing in your work in the program to add more value and get more insight. Um, I'm curious, maybe Christo, uh, as you nod there, what did you choose as the project as you went through the program and maybe the knowledge and skills that you got out? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, and I see that uh, Alan also asked a question, so I can maybe, I think my okay. answer is going to lead on to that. So I also didn't have any IT or digitalization um, experience, Alan, and I think um, this pro and this is what make what's what makes this program so unique and um, great, really, because you are being given the tools to to help with the, you know digitalization, but it's it's not just about that. It's actually in the the, the bigger picture is about changing people's behaviors and streamlining processes. And I think that for me that 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 was what. Um, you know what helped me when when I had to set up a, a new business unit with, with within our insurance practice. That's a very um, conservative way of of you know auditors are very conservative and they you know this it's only black or white. There's no in between. So try and find a way to, uh, to make them see that they they their time is actually better used at spending time on audit related activities and, and not non audit related activities is a challenge and it's still ongoing. And, you know, we've, um, I think this uh, program really just helped me to to kind of lead that project and to make sure that founda foundationally it was solid um, because I was concerned even with an MBA background and with project management background, how I'm going to set up something like this. It's not just purely digitalization or change management. It's got a lot of different um, mix of things into it. Um, so I think you can really use this program for any anything that um, you know that, that, that you take uh, in, in your daily jobs and, and what you do. Um, whether it's a new initiative, whether it's an existing process you need to revamp, where you know there's just so there's so many different things you can use it for. Love that advice. And Andrew um, and I were doing a workshop the other day, and I was actually shocked to learn that uh, I believe it was seventy four percent of the budgets now are coming for these digital transformation projects from outside IT. And so that just shows us that it doesn't matter even what business unit you're in anymore. It could be HR, finance, could be IT, uh, could be general operations. Really, we're all participating in this. Um, and we need Technology is making its way into business units yeah. and creating these business technology positions, technologists is the way to think about it. That's really where the DTM is focused about those business technologists doing things. The detail is critical, though, this program, 
because it steps a little bit above that and says, if I have these people, what are they supposed to do? So uh, that's where I think detail is so important. It's almost like a first step. If you don't understand what you're trying to do with the people, you're not going to be that successful. So this gives you a time to think about, well, what should we be doing? How should we be doing it? How should we think about that? And then uh, DTM is for people who want to be a part of that business technology mixture and get things done and have impact. So uh, that's why I think I love the two programs together. I think it's, it's what is needed in the industry. So we haven't asked directly yet, but you've all alluded that you were working while doing this program. And so I'm just curious if you can speak a little bit to the balance. How did you actually manage the work and the program at the same time? Armanjeet, would you like to start us off? Sure. Uh, as I mentioned, I completed my MBA uh, in July 2022. And during my MBA, I was spending at least around 30 to 35 hours a week to prepare my, uh, uh, for lectures, for uh, doing assignments and I was kind of already in the rhythm when I joined the DTL program uh, and uh, spending four to six hours a week was uh, nothing for me at the time. <laughs> and uh, it was, uh, so I was able to manage that, but definitely I think uh, if we reduce some uh, non necessary ta tasks like uh, um, uh, Netflix marathons and uh, all that kind of stuff, definitely it will help you to uh, com uh, complete this course. Oh yeah. What about you? Any tips mm -hmm. or tricks or how did you balance? Well, oh, I, I enjoyed the program so much because it was my time and on your own time, you do the lecture and you, if you want to dig deeper in certain areas, for me, it was customer focus and, um, Andrew Harris was leading two of those modules and he was my uh, former professor. So I really enjoyed certain modules because I could dig so much more deeper in them. But as Amarjit said, after you do MBA, this program is a breeze. <laughs> <laughs> and it's practical. Like practicality of it, that's what made a huge difference for me. That you every week you do deliverable on your own and you show it in the cohort. And cohort is so supportive. Feedback that they give you, they, they want you to succeed. And they want your presentation to be the strongest. So Because you, you, you're not competing with them you're ultimately better making your skills better to present to your boss. So it's, it's all good. <laughs> Christo, any advice for balancing the program and work? Yeah, I think for, for me, it was a little bit more challenging because, um, you know, I moved into the, to this new role. Um, so it was helpful at the one side and the other side was super challenging in terms of time wise. Um, so I'm not going to, to, to beat around the bush uh, with that, but once I started to emerge myself into to the process and with the feedback that, that I received from my cohort, um, it just became easier. So it, it's almost like just getting into that habit again. Um, so it's definitely doable even with a very, very busy schedule. In fact, it actually helped me to, to organize myself better, um, right? So it's uh, I would definitely recommend it. In the, and and as Olya said, you know we've all we've done our MBA, so it, it, it it's kind of you know and only recently, so you 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 managed to get back into the swing of things. Although I must admit, once I completed my MBA, I said I'm not going to go back and hit the books again. I'm just going to take a break, and then yes, six months later, I I did do it. But you know, it was it's just such a um, uh, rewarding um, experience, I think, for for me, and I think for everyone else on this call. Amazing. And we did have a question um, asking if an MBA is a prerequisite. It isn't. Um, we just happen to have a lucky group here that uh, went through um, our programs. But most of the people that come into the DTM and DTL do not um, have graduate programming. And so it really is set up for um, people to come in and learn right from scratch. So you don't have to have any experience in digital or IT um, or even a graduate um, or post-secondary uh, degree. So we really want to support all different kinds of pathways of learners. There's another question, I think, uh, maybe for you, Andrew. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Uh, Jeff, what's, what's going to happen with AI and, and how it's going to support? Like, uh, my God, we're going a little bit, we're freaking out a little bit in universities thinking about how we're going to handle something like uh, chat GPT. And, uh, but I'm not freaking out as much because I think these are going to become components in your toolbox. Things you're going to bring with you when you work to help you get through the muck of getting the information you need. And instead, you can focus on problem solving, 
uh, making decisions and the things that humans are like really awesome at. So I feel like uh, rather than thinking about the threat of AI, I'd like us to think about how we can harness it and utilize it and make it uh, more valuable. And clearly digital transformation is a piece of this work. So imagine when, uh, I don't know, Christo, if you can think about it, PwC and all of your advisors have chat GPC right beside, and, and they're basically using that toolbox to help advise you. Like you've got to feel like you got the most up-to-date uh, information and, and you can really help people make an impact with that. So I just think of it as a as a potential positive, hopefully for us. I hope it doesn't eliminate us, but I don't think it does. We still have to critically think, we still have to problem solve, we still have to make decisions. Uh, and I think that's what that's what's human about the work that we do. Great points. And I wonder maybe if we could uh, end around uh, um, questions, just any advice you have for future participants uh, that might come into the program. Armanjeet, do you want to start? Sure. Uh, yeah, I would advise to the future participant to come to this program with open mind. So I think there are a lot, a lot of tools, a lot of uh, new things you will learn. So definitely be ready to challenge your assumptions or beliefs you have. And there are great faculty members. And I think the knowledge, uh, especially Andrew, Terry, Blaze have. So that, that will definitely you will gain uh, a lot from this program. Thank you. Well, yeah. What do you think? What mm -hmm. advice do you have? Well, it's the cutting edge program. And I know Andrew and Professor Blaze, they did phenomenal work attracting the top professors, really combining this material like Andrew's been at us a few 25 years. <laughs> so you can imagine. So he's seen all MBA programs. He knows what works for students. And if you don't have two years and I don't know, $60,000 how much it costs now, you can do DTL and get high level MBA with exact same concepts we learn. And the bonus, you just apply them directly to your company. Like it, it's such a fantastic program. And like in my case, it helped me leverage to next industry. So I, yeah, I don't think I would, I would do it without you, Andrew. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Oh, yeah, that's, that's great. It's great to have you in the classroom too. It's just so much fun. I think for, for me, one thing that I would, um, and maybe this is just taking a step back and reflecting on the program, I would have definitely liked to, um, to make use more of the opportunity um, to to reach out to to my cohort um, offline outside of our peer sessions because we we had a really great group and I think that's what's what makes this program amazing. You have so many different diverse a diverse group of people and from different industries. The great thing is is that um, and this is certainly what I learned from this and my takeaway and advice would be is, is learn as much as you can from your peers. Um, the program material is there and it's, um, you know, it, it's um, sometimes obviously, you know, being um, uh, uh, there's some academic components, but in terms of learning from other people and what they are doing in their own organizations, you know, from different industries, um, if you take some of those um, things that, that, um, that they are doing differently, it actually makes your mind think in a different way on your own, you know, what you can do on your own project and your own digital transformation process. So that is uh, definitely for me, what's the, the, you know, the biggest lesson and advice for anyone who wants to join this um, amazing program. Thank you. And I just want to extend a big thanks um, to everyone that joined us today and especially our past participants and Andrew, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I wanted to also invite if you would like a follow up conversation or you would like to learn more, please email us at sfudial at sfu.ca. Uh, there's a QR code there that'll take you to our website. And if you're interested in joining uh, the Digital Transformation Leadership Program, we have uh, the upcoming program dates here on the screen. Uh, so again, please get in touch with us uh, if you're interested and we can share more information. So thank you again. Hope you have a great afternoon and take care, everyone. Thank you.